Thanks everybody for being here. Looking forward to jumping into tonight's topic, which is identifying and really getting in the head of your target and ideal customer. So um, this is a big, uh, a big moment for many business owners. A lot of us create our product and service, something we're passionate about. And um, uh, we think about what we do all the time, but we don't necessarily always get into the head of our target customer. And this is going to be a big foundational part of your of marketing plan. So it's going to be uh, a nice bite-sized chunk today to just think about customers, which is going to be fun. As you know, this is part of our small business support series. And as Amanda mentioned, our mission with this course is to help you, to guide you to write your own marketing plan. So each week you're getting copies of this deck. In the, the very first session, it walked through the outline of what your document should have if you were creating a marketing plan in whatever formula you're creating it. Um, and you're seeing us go through each week the biggest sections of it to help you just get in the zone. So that's our mission from this week. And as, as we heard already, if you have questions, let me know. So last week we talked a lot about SMART goals and I loved the energy around it. Like a couple of you, uh, well, at least one of you shared at the end of last session what your SMART goal was with us, which was fantastic. Um, uh, it's really exciting to be here and, and I loved that energy of seeing somebody do it. So I am, you know, we looked at evaluating your position, what your end game looks like, what it will take to get you there, mapping it out and measuring what you do because what you measure moves and so even if you only set one smart goal for yourself make sure that you've done that um, and we're going to talk in a minute if any of you are willing to share your smart goals now would be the time to start getting them out because uh, i would love to hear it this week we're going to walk through um, your target audience or customer what an ideal customer is and how that's different than a target one we're gonna go through a few steps on how to define your target audience, developing personas, if that's something you wanna do. Not everybody needs to, but I gave, you some, I gave you some material in the very first session about this, and we're gonna go over it like in a more hands-on way today. We're gonna to talk about strategic planning by target because many of you are gonna have more than one target customer. And finally, how do you use this information? Like how can we create the right mix on how to serve them? So that's what we're covering today. Awesome. Okay, so tonight we're gonna to jump in to, um, to thinking about target customers. And at this stage in your planning, we've gone through sort of getting your story nailed down, um, really the overarching thing. At this stage, you should be really asking, here's like four questions to ask yourself. And these are things that I like to think about whenever somebody is asking me for either um, they're ready to get to work on a SMART goal, they're ready to get to work with on a tactic with a client, like maybe on LinkedIn, like Terry. What I would say is, as you think about your target customer, who is it you want to reach, right? That's our target customer. What is it you want them to do? How are you going to measure it? And what's the return you're looking for? So let me go back. I'm going to pick on Stephen for a second. Um, he uh, he it, it indicated. I'm going to pick one of his. Right. I want to um, I want to monitor. I want to grow trust through my website. Okay. So grow it. We want to reach this specific target audience um, it, that's really ready to do things. What is it I want them to do? Do I want them to sign up for my email list so I can stay in touch with them? Do I want them to connect with me on LinkedIn? Do I want them to view a section of my website, fill out a lead form, um, read about a product, buy a product? Like, what is it you want that person to do? How are you going to measure it? So in the case of say, uh, one of Steven's goals was all lowering bounce rate. Um, making sure they stay on the site. So he's going to measure that by looking at his bounce rate. And then what is that return you're looking for? So take your SMART goals. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about audience. And when you get to audience, this is always what I ask people. I'll say, okay, you want to reach women ages 25 to 52 within 20 miles of your store? That's awesome. What do you want them to do? And they'll be like, oh, buy stuff. I'll be like in store or on e-commerce. Like, what is it you really want them to do? Um, do you want them to sign up for your loyalty club, 
join your email list so you can talk to them all the time. How are you going to measure it? Because we can all say, I want a hundred new customers. Are you, how are you going to know that they, that somebody that came into your store and bought something came because of your web campaign or, you know what I mean? That's, so that's part of it. You know, a lot of times we spend money on advertising or marketing, or we try to do it ourselves and we then hope that our business gets better, but we don't really have a path to measurement. Last week we talked about measuring those SMART goals and it's why SMART, um, SMART uh, is part, is an acronym. It's not just, you know, intelligent SMART, it's because there has to be some mechanism for measurement. So as um, Terry, for example, starts really focusing more on LinkedIn and thinking about LinkedIn, some of the ways she can measure that would be, um, is have my connections grown? Have I heard from or deepened my relationships with people? For example, like am I having a, is it stimulating conversations with people that I wouldn't have had otherwise? Um, am I spending the amount of time on it? that I expected. You know, those are all measurement mechanisms. Tonight, the reason I started with this is when we get into target audiences, it's easy to say, I want, you know, this specific audience, um, but what are you going to do with them when you get them, right? So make sure you're thinking about that. Okay, so now we're going to jump in to target audience work. So I want to talk for a minute about target and ideal customer and I'm going to use a real life example from one of my clients who thankfully is not on today's call uh, when I use this example. Um, it is a spa. And I walked into the spa for the first time, this was, I wanna say six years ago or so when they really started working with us more intensely. And I said, um, okay, tell me about your target customer. Like I'm standing in the spa, I can see it, I feel everything around it. She had shown me their brochure and, and, and some of their advertising because I asked for those assets. Remember that first class we had where I asked you to look at some of your assets, like things that you've done in the past. So I had a few of her assets in front of me. I could see the place. It's beautiful. It's very zen. Uh, lots of um, water uh, bubbling around and uh, really relaxing in there. And um, her brochure had all these different services that she offered, everything, hair, nails, um, uh, a lot of products that she sold, massages, waxing, and then um, some, they call them aesthetics, uh, like um, treatments that you get for your skin. Um, so I looked at all those. And I said, tell me about your target customer. And she said, oh, that's easy. Uh, it's women. I was like, yeah, I get it, right? Like I'm sitting in the spa. Um, I want you to dig deeper. Uh, tell me a little bit more about this. Like how old is your target customer? Or how much money do they make? Or, you know, anything. And she says, no, no, no. I don't want to do this exercise because we, we love and want all women. She says, I have one massage client who's elderly. I do, we do hair. Uh, they were doing hair updos for girls for prom. So she's like 18 to elderly. And I was like, uh, this isn't working right now. Like, obviously I understand that I don't want to turn off any women and that we have a wide variety of services, but tell me more about it. And she just couldn't get there. And part of that was because she wanted to welcome all women Part of it was also because all the marketing she had ever done before had been in like print or cable TV. And they don't really give you a chance to narrow it down, right? Like you're women, you go like in the lifestyle section and men, you go in the sports section. And, and it was, she had never really thought more deeply about it. So then I looked at her brochure. I opened it up and I said, there's lots going on here, ranging from, you know, $18 to several hundred dollars. Um, Tell me a little bit about out of everything on the sheet, what is your most profitable product or service? Where do you really make money? And she was like, that's easy. And it was uh, Botox and Xeom and it's these fillers, right? Like the inject injections in your face. I said, okay, great. Um, out of all these products that you sell, she has this wall of skin creams, lotions, makeup, all this stuff. Out of all of these items, what is your most profitable one? And without any hesitation, 
she goes to the center and picks up this little tiny, like three ounce jar of wrinkle cream that's like $75. And I'm like, okay, so our target customer is probably 32 to 54. They have a lot of disposable income. And by the way, all this Zen stuff you're doing is a waste of time because that woman's gonna come in here, say, stick a needle in my forehead, get me right out of here, cover it up with makeup, and I'm gonna move on and go on with my day. Like those women don't have time to relax. They don't want Zen. They they aren't necessarily the target customer. And what I realized was she was making 400 plus percent profit margin on Botox and like 11% on massages or 20% on massages, maybe 10 or 15% on prom updos. So that's not my target customer. My target customer is, I, we started a whole branding campaign for her and called these services age management. Um, we have aging gracefully parties. The other thing that's very interesting is her third best seller is gift certificates. You know who buys gift certificates? Men do, right? So men. Uh, so what we really changed her marketing after that, where I recognized that, of course, I'm going to promote the manicures and pedicures. Of course, we're going to promote the massages. But when I'm really zeroing in on what's going to move the needle in that business and help her hit her smart goals, I've got to sell a lot more things to busy women who are trying to make sure that they're managing their age, right? Um, and, and beyond that target customer, her ideal customer is somebody who has all the attributes of target, but it goes another uh, step beyond. They're more affluent, they tell their friends, and they come more often, right? Like some people get it done once a year, then she's got other gals that are in there every three months getting stuff shot in and, and laser treatments and everything. And so that was, a, that was a process that I share because it wasn't easy for that spa owner. And if you looked at her spa then and you look at it now, all those water things are gone. The hair salon is gone. The, um, uh, the, a lot of those Zen treatments are gone. And 80% and of the business is entirely focused on the Medi Spa, which is where she was making her money, right? doesn't mean she didn't love all that other stuff, but going through this exercise, then using marketing to move the needle and grow that business made her recognize she could just double down on what works, right? Really double down on what works. And every single room in that spa now is a medical treatment room. And um, she has a ton of really loyal customers. So you are going to have multiple target customers, like her wanting to reach multiple women. There was nothing wrong with that. But you just need to zero in a little bit and say, which one's my real ideal one? And then if, and maybe you'll have multiple targets. So I'll pick on Steven again. Like Steven in his business, because I've had some little bit of exposure to that business um, a few years ago, you know, he's targeting individual clients that may want to build a house and are looking for an architect. And another target audience might be a builder or somebody that's developing land or developing properties like you it's okay to have multiple target customers just don't be afraid to zero in a little bit and really think about them and then out of all those targets that you choose who is your ideal like who's really your ideal because zeroing in um on that for my spa client really has transformed her business over the past couple of years and we rec recognize, for example, that a lot of women that get that done don't want everybody to know about it. So we don't do testimonial advertising, like, wow, I look so young because I do that. Like, that's not how we do it. The ideal customer might want to tell one or two friends and have private parties or private events where her friends get discounts because of her. That's what we do, right? Like, it's just totally different than me trying to just do general marketing, which would be to encourage the spa to have open houses and events because she would spend, she'd spent a lot of money on the catering and all of that. And we weren't reaching the woman who really is her ideal customer. So I, I want you, first of all today, obviously the biggest thing for you to be thinking about is focusing on your target customer. Um, you know, that's the one you want to think about, but to the extent that you also can think of ideal 
And when you're thinking of marketing campaigns, really getting in the head of that ideal person, that's when it all will sing. So remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked about creating your story, your customer is the hero of your story, right? And you are the guide. So when you really think about target an ideal customer and think about how you are their guide, that's when it's easy for you to really pull things together. And Terry, that will give you ideas of what you should write about on LinkedIn or what kind of articles you should share on LinkedIn are the ones that um, are, are really going to uh, appeal here. So I hope that that make the difference between target and ideal makes sense there. Um, and now we'll go through some steps to help you uh, create your target customer. So defining your target customer um, is a really useful exercise. If you, have, um, <clears throat> if you have a picture in your head of what you think it is, um, make a couple notes to yourself now before we go through the exercises or sometime tonight before you go through the steps because what will be most interesting is if you get through the whole process and end up where you think you are. That spa owner was really like, holy moly, this is so different than what I was thinking. You know, she had three hairstylists in a salon in the spa that aren't even there anymore. Like it's this really, this exercise just really transformed things for her. So um, think about um, sometimes our assumptions aren't the right ones. But the first, first step in really getting there, which this is something we went through when we looked at your story, is understanding the customer, pro customer problems you solve, right? Um, and thinking about them. So, um, you know, you, you have your hero of the story and you're the guide. What are some of the challenges that you help them overcome? And in the case of the spa, like I'll just stick with that example because we, we're kind of in that zone. Um, she solved all kinds of problems for lots of people. And, um, and that there's, that's wonderful. Her, her spa was beautiful, but it was not going to be a game changer from an income level for her. And she wanted it to be. Like she really wanted to be aggressive and invest and make this business make her a lot of money. And so we looked at all the different problems she solves and recognized that there were some that drove the bottom line a lot more than others. And so it, this transformation took a couple of years. There was a lot of validation that those customers could sustain her with a, as she cut some of the things out. Like I think it was three years before we cut out hair, for example. Um, but if you really think about the problem you solve for a customer, as your first step, it helps you get in the zone of thinking about your customer. It helps you think about your business differently than, um, than uh, just what you offer. So for example, if you're Amanda and you're at Machaya Savings Bank, there's a lot of things that Machaya Savings Bank does, right? And for example, there's certain kinds of accounts or there's all these different things. But one of the customer problems that they solve would be convenience. Right? And so maybe that means mobile checking, maybe that means different drive-throughs or ATMs or, you know, it really helps them think differently about the business. So recognize that the customer problems you solve might not just be the services you offer, think really about what is the problem you're solving. So step one is to make a few notes about that. And step two is who are my current customers? Like, you're, many of you, you know, Terry mentioned she's been in business a couple of years. You're doing business, which is fantastic. And so who are you selling to today? Sometimes you'll find that um, there's, there's this whole cycle of adoption of products. Sometimes it's friends or family or contacts you know well that become existing clients or early clients. Sometimes it's people that are early adopters and happen to jump right into certain kinds of technology or the way you do business faster. Um, sometimes it's marketing campaigns that you did and you got some customers and that's awesome. So who are your current customers and why do they buy from you? Like what is it that motivates them to come to you? And you know, with that spa, we did some customer surveys where I asked her if we could like talk to some of her clients and validate what we were putting in, you know, what we were putting out there in terms of her targets. And, and so you can talk to your customers, you can ask them, you can do a survey, or you can just, what knowledge you have of your existing customers. Um, what, why are they buying from you? Are there 
is there anything that they have in common? Like sometimes common in commonality there is just geography or cl close to you, but do they have any common characteristics or interests that you hadn't considered before? Um, when I started putting into that spa owner's head um, that her, her real target market tend to be really on the go women, right? Like they're busy, they're, if they're either working um, or they're um, very um, involved in like uh, charity things or their kids' lives, they're very involved in busy women who care about their appearance and are willing to invest in their appearance. A, not a small amount of money, right? Th those co char common characteristics and interests mean that they're not the same target market as somebody who can sit around and get pedicures every couple of days or get massages on the regular, like it's just very different. And so that really made her think differently about it. And then out of your current customers, which ones bring in the most business? So a girl who gets her hair done on prom is coming in once a year, right? And she probably can't afford to be there any other time. And she's definitely not buying any products. So that's not our target customer. That's okay if we serve her, but that's not who I'm trying to reach with more marketing. Um, so think about which ones are bringing you the most business. In many cases, a definition of an ideal customer is somebody who talks to other people. Ah, and this is something um, that Amanda's just sharing in the chat. Knowing your customer avatar is what you talked about in that first Small Business Academy. It's a great, it's a great point, um, uh, Amanda. And that is a, a, a perfect perfect segue into really thinking about what we're doing today. So think about that current customer base, what ones are bringing in the most business and what is it they're doing to make that happen um, so that you can stimulate more of that activity. So step three, um, you know, a, a lot of us um, have competitive landscapes in our business, of course we do. And some people obsess over competitors and some people like to pave their own way. Um, I tend to be a little bit more the latter because honestly half of my competition is people thinking they can do everything themselves, right? Like, so there's a lot of different comp types of competition out there. But when you're thinking about your target customer and your ideal customer, take a look at your competitors just when you're look, take a look at their marketing, take a look at what they're saying online about themselves, how they define themselves on their website, um, and see if you can get a picture in your head of who they're targeting and or who their current customers are. And then think, okay, how am I the same? How am I different? How do I solve customer problems better? Um, and uh, where am I weaker? Where am I stronger? And we're gonna go more into this when we look at a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in a future session. But I like to do a gut check on target customer. And I'm gonna go back to my spa example, just because I wanna make sure this really resonates. There are two spas in the town that my client is in. The second spa uh, really uh, promoted itself as very zen, uh, a lot of bamboo, green plants in there. Uh, their primary angle was massage treatments and they had several rooms of massages and my client only had one. Um, they sold a lot of uh, what I would call relaxation treatments and products around relaxation. So my client had added a massage room, added a masseuse and added these bubbly water treatments, which by the way, were really charming. Um, be out of a reaction that she needed to, that's what her competitor was doing and she needed to level up. When I talked to her and looked through where she was actually making her money um, and who her target customer was, they aren't buying those things. And so I said, Sue, they're coming to your spa because you offer those things. So why are we spending time, money and a precious and precious uh, square footage in your property trying to be the same uh, or offer that to, as your competitor. And maybe, maybe somebody will go get a massage over there and then come over and get Botox over here. And so what we recognized is she solved customer problems better in that area because she is a nurse and the other spot isn't allowed to do those kinds of treatments because they don't have a nurse that owns it. So um, by really zeroing in on how she solved customers problems better and where she actually made her money 
it became, her SMART goals completely changed and it became really clear um, what path she was on with her business. Oh, and can you find a niche market or something that they're overlooking? Is there anything there um, that, that they aren't doing that you'd like to do? And like this spot, sometimes these transformations take years. Like it doesn't mean you have to, in a, in a heartbeat, shut down the massage department and close the door. It just means you think about where you're prioritizing your time and resources and you make adjustments over time to get where you want to be. All right. Step four is analyzing your products and service. This is not easy. And we talked about it when we talked about telling your story and we talked about speaking in the voice of the customer. So when I suggest that you take step four about analyzing your product and service, I mean in the eyes and mind and heart of your customer. So what are the features and benefits of your product or service? Make a list. And um, the reason I use this particular graphic is because um, it's a common mistake businesses make. They get all caught up in the features. So my umbrella is unbreakable. It has a wood handle and cloth, cloth top and they stop. When really you're selling, what you're selling is protection from the weather, right? You're not selling a wooden handle. You're selling protection from the sun, protection from the weather, and your audience either wants a big one or a small one, or a cheap one or an expensive one, or a pretty one or a black one, right? So um, think about your features and benefits and make that list, but really think about it in terms of your customer. For many of you, features matter, like the different services or things that you sell or do matter. I'm not saying they don't. What I am saying though, is the benefits in the voice of the customer are the big thing that you're trying to get out of step four. So my spa is recognized that, you know, based on our customer surveys and what I was telling them, that a little bit more privacy is good. And not everybody wants to be seen hanging out in the waiting room together. And so it changed how they booked appointments. They added a back entrance so people could come in, get their stuff done and go out. Um, there was just a lot of changes that were made once they really started thinking about the customer's perspective. And I know all of us that own businesses want our customers to be happy. I'm not in any way indicating that you don't. I just think that the more you think about the benefits of what you do and in the voice of your customer, the deeper your relationships will be, the more remarkable you will be to them. Remember when Rich asked you what makes you remarkable, and the more uh, money you'll make, right? The more loyalty that you will instill with them. And then step five is what most people think is the only step in your target audience, which is let's think a little bit about these folks. So demographics, like roughly how old are they? Is location a factor or not? Um, gender, income level, educational level, marital or family status, occupation, ethnic background. These are all different types of demographics. And it is good to have a picture of that because when later on we talk about leveraging social media or advertising, some of these are different ways that you would target somebody with an ad. And when we change that spa from all women within say five miles of the spa to women of this type, this income level, this distance from the spa, which by the way was farther, um, then our ads started working way better. So demographics is sort of those characteristics. And then psychographics is what are they like? What do they like? Like what are their challenges and goals? Like I want to look younger, feel younger. I care about my appearance, um, my personality. I'm probably very busy on the go. Um, in my, and I, in my personal life and my uh, professional life, you know, what are the attitudes or values that they have? Are there any interests or hobbies, um, lifestyle and behavior? Behavior is, you know, as I mentioned, you know, maybe they want more privacy. Maybe they don't want their face on your Facebook page as a happy customer. Maybe they do, right? Um, a lot of times people find that an ideal customer is someone who's proud to, to give you a review or showcase uh, that they work with you or introduce you to people in public. 
So whatever that is, um, you know, make sure that you've got those in line as well. And one psychographic a lot of people don't think about um, that you can actually target on on Facebook is have they bought online before, for example. Um, like, is that something people do? And that's actually something I can target on on Facebook is have they ever purchased online and have they ever purchased anything on their phone? Like, right, like it's that specific. Um, so uh, one of my clients is a uh, app. He's an app that you download on your phone and you track mood and a lot of health things and then the data goes to your doctor. Really cool. But I, I only spend my money on Facebook advertising with people that actually have purchased something on a phone, filled out forms on a phone, and, and are purchasing thing, things through apps on a phone. And Facebook knows that. And so that way, I'm very specific uh, based on that behavior, and I don't waste any of his advertising dollars. So step five, demographics and psychographics, you're going to have them maybe for multiple audiences, or at minimum, you'll find some of the psychographics uh, are probably different for your ideal customer than your, um, than your uh, target customer, or you may find income levels higher. There's, there's probably something that's a little bit different um, with your ideal over your target. Okay, and then step six. For those of you who are earlier in your business or in the case of that spa, um, you wanna validate what you're doing. So if you're early in your business, and you're, and you're thinking up these ideas, because I know a few of you are startups, then you wanna give yourself a gut check, right? Are there enough people out there that want this, um, that fit my criteria are within a reasonable geography or whatever of what I'm doing? In the case of the spa, while she could see it working, she took years to start zeroing in um, and cutting off some, gradually cutting off some of those other services so that she didn't drastically lose a bunch of revenue and upset people, you know, right away. You know, um, she eased out of nails, nails, she eased out of hair, and it helped her really validate that there were enough people, um, that that target um, will really benefit from the product and service, and that they'll see enough of a need to it to keep coming back to sustain the growth that she wanted. Um, think about, do you really understand what, tar what drives that person to make a decision? Right? Like what, what is it that makes them buy from you or um, repeat buy, et cetera? Can they afford it? And can you reach them with your message or are they a challenge to find, right? Uh, because if you've chosen a target audience that is not easily accessible, then it means your marketing will be challenging and um, word of mouth will have to be really critical to what you do. And if you know all that and you're okay with that, then that's great. But step six, before you really zero in on everything is evaluating that what you've chosen makes a lot of sense. Okay, now the last part of what we do is make them real. So there's a variety of different ways you can make them real. Um, this is an example of a persona. And I talked a little bit in our first, first section that when you get to your target audience section of your marketing plan, um, you can be brief, you can just talk about your target audience, the size of that market and what you want to do. Like in my business plan, you know, we work with small and medium sized businesses. There are about 98 million of them in the US. We have branches in 17 different mark in states, uh, in 52 different markets. And here's how we hit those small businesses. And I could talk about the factors. Like we work with ones who have ideas but can't execute on their own, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we talk about the psychographics and demographics. And a, uh, this is an example of a persona. Sometimes it helps if you just give them a name um, and hang up the picture because it, for the rest of your employees, um, it makes that seem real, right? And I, I worked with one startup where their persona, their target audience, they had two, they had Jane and Jim. They were very different, but I'd always, you know, I just say to the product guys, is that really what Jane wants? Is that really what Jane wants? Like, are you really thinking about what Jane wants? And it just gave us a way to sort of talk about it um, with each other that was real. And it makes, when you say the sentence, is that really what Jane wants? It forces them to think differently than, you know, how do you feel about the work you did? Because they're going to say, I worked my butt off and it's pretty. You're welcome, right? Like they're not, 
they're going to be presenting their work to you, not thinking about, is this what my customer wants? So for some of you, this will be overkill. For some of you, um, if you have a team in particular, or if you work with outside firms, it really helps if you're all in the same zone on what that persona is. And here's a sample, uh, a sample one. And then here's one that has a, just another way of looking at it that I've shown you before, which is really knowing your customer. Like we didn't get all nerdy and name her, but there she is and uh, what she's purchasing and what her income is and what does she do and just anything that you can do for yourself and or your team to just look at your work and put yourself in the head of your customer really helps. Um, and there are, there, you can even create a story because remember, they're the hero of your story. So you, you have the hero of your story, you're the guide, and you show them the way and solve their problems. You know, what is the story about this person? Like, what are, what are their days like? And when you think in that zone, it helps you think about how do I speak to them? How do I surprise and delight them by really getting them? Um, because in today's crazy, highly distracted world, the more you speak in the language of your customer, the more loyalty uh, you'll develop and the, and the more they'll talk about you. And then finally, when you're doing your plan, whether it's a, a full-scale marketing plan as we've been talking about, or whether you're even just doing your monthly plan of here's the marketing stuff I'm gonna do this month, um, come up with a plan per target. So I'm gonna do these things for Jane. Um, I'm gonna be on Pinterest. Uh, because that's where Jane is. We're going to do these things on Pinterest. We're having this sale for her. Uh, with the spa right now, I, we're working on a Facebook and a Pinterest campaign um, for a fall to winter um, special that she's running. Um, so I have a whole strategy around that busy target audience. Then if you have a second target audience, maybe you have a separate plan for them. But think about how you're going to specifically address their needs um, how you're going to appeal to them so that they're going to want you, and how are you going to reach out to that ideal customer, or are there any incentives that you can offer the ideal to, to give more behavior? So at the spa, we give discounts to that ideal customer, and if they bring in um, peers or they want to have a private party, we make sure that they benefit from extra product or swag or something because that makes them feel special and that's what they want to feel. So anything that you can do to sort of make sure that you're speaking to the ideal customer specifically in your actions or your words or your behavior is very good. And then make sure that the content you write speaks their language. Um, we had a great question on one of the last sessions and I can't remember if it was Kitty or someone else that said, uh, shared it was really hard to talk about accounting in the language of the customer. And um, I had that on my mind today. I got a message from my accountant that she had met with the heads of one of my departments. And she was like, um, I think that we are speaking the same language. And she was so excited that she felt she broke through because we talk about, uh, we talk about things like, you know, um, depth of service. And she's like, wait, what? You mean margin, gross or net? And we're like, what? Um, and so uh, the more you can, speak the language of the customer, uh, the more successful, uh, more successful the marketing efforts will be. Okay, so that's a whole lot of information on target customers. And I'm gonna open it up for questions and I've got a couple pieces for inspiration for you. But before I give you that, I wanted to just zoom back up to say 30,000 feet again. Remember, when you create your marketing plan, you'll be using it or aspects of it, whatever aspects you decide to invest in on a regular basis, because it'll help you keep your goals in front of you, then how, what marketing you choose to do relates to those goals, how what you say relates to that audience and the goals, your messaging will relate to it. That defines what channels you're on. Like, so for the spa, it's a no brainer that we're Facebook and Instagram heavily, like LinkedIn isn't gonna work. The channels are determined by that. All of these pieces work together. And whether you have a formal fancy document or whether you have a whiteboard in front of you with the different aspects, um, either one works if, if you work it, right? Like it's a treadmill. We want you to build that treadmill 
And we're hoping that you also run on it to grow your business. But at, at minimum, uh, whatever you work, work it, I think is what I'm trying to say. And it all will relate to each other. So for inspiration in thinking about your target audience and customer, I've got a couple pieces of resources for today's work that I've sent to the Machaya Savings Bank team for them to put online. They've already got the deck online and they'll have these online too. There's one spreadsheet. I just created a spreadsheet for you with a few of these different questions and some examples of what you'd ask about it. And I also put in, um, somebody asked me a question um, in one of the previous sessions and I can't remember if it was a private email or chat, forgive me for that, but um, uh, somebody asked me about a sample content plan and how to create a content plan. We're not there yet, but since I mentioned that you're gonna wanna think about a plan per customer, I wanted to get this resource out in front of you. And it's just a spreadsheet that lets you, you know, start typing in what you're going to do per day, how you're gonna do your mix when you're thinking about your target customer. There is plenty of software that also does some of these things. And when we get later in our sessions in future weeks, I'd be happy to answer questions about that too. But since I was asking you to make notes about your target customer, I thought you might like this. So I just threw it into a spreadsheet um, and you can uh, leverage that if you'd like to. So for your homework, and then we'll open it up to questions, really thinking about who is your target and ideal customer and creating some summary of them. Um, oh, thank you, Terry. That's very nice of you to say. Um, uh, it makes sense to Terry, which is good. Uh, that's part of our goal today. So think about your target and ideal customer. And I know that a target customer is anyone who spends money. Um, I get it. Um, imagine when I'm asking you to zero in on your, I, your target, you can see what a transformation that level of specificity made to that spa and how much simpler her marketing is, how much simpler her decorating is. Like the minute she really thought about it, um, she really was able to make it simpler. For some of you, another way to think about this is something I said to her early on is, if we have a hundred dollars to spend this much to reach one of those women, what are they going to buy? Right? Like it, it make your marketing money or time have big results, which means you're going to focus that in on what's most important and what customer is buying what's most important. And that's your target. Okay, thanks everybody. I know we went a couple minutes over. Um, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the middle in the meantime, between this week and next week, um, Amanda and Jessica will make sure that the information is on the website. In fact, I already know it's there because somebody asked for it earlier today. Um, so um, I'm happy to answer anything I can and thank you for being here today. Thank you.